A conversation with Franklin continues. Franklin Muley's roots in Bay Area sports started at the San Francisco Brewing Company, makers of Burgermeister beer. This is where his early advertising association with the local 49ers and Giants led him to purchasing small percentages of both teams. In 1962, Franklin was instrumental in bringing the basketball warriors from the East, thanks in large part to his friendship with Gene Autry. He, he said, look, uh, uh, I have a friend who has a franchise, an NBA franchise, he wouldn't tell me what it was, which franchise, that wants to move it from, uh, from the East to San Francisco because the Lakers have been there for two years, they've had great success, be natural rivalry, and, and will say, and the league will save money on travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, geez, you know, uh, I, I love uh, all sports. I said, but I'm up to here in football and, and, and b baseball now. And I said, between the Chinese and 49 I only have a few months off as it is. And so he could see that I wasn't that interested. So he says, well, Gene Autry tells me that one way or another, if we have a franchise here, I'm going to have to deal with you because you've got your fingers in all the radio television. <laughs> he says, so I might as well tell you who, who it is. And uh, he says, it's Philadelphia. I said, Philadelphia? With Will Chamberlain? <laughs> and no, now sugar plums are dancing to my head, knowing the old days were, you know, in the NBA in those days, the NBA championship was settled by whoever won the East, because mm -hmm. we used to end up with Russell and, and Wilt fighting for the, whoever won, and then they'd, exactly. and they'd take uh, the Lakers in you know, four games straight. Right. <laughs> So I figured, gee, when he crickets, to get, um, we'd have a, a real coast-to-coast -coast thing, uh, uh, playing against Bill Russell, bringing him home to play us. Franklin, tell me about Eddie Gottlieb, the founder and owner of the Philadelphia Warriors and the guy that was instrumental in bringing him out to the West Coast. What kind of man was he? Oh, he was a wonderful man. He was a wonderful man. Next to my father, he was the most helpful man to me in this business because he taught me all, all the values I still have about the team and your responsibility of having a team. When um, the deal was first made to move out here, he was part of the deal. He had agreed to act as a guide or a, 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 a protector for two years mm -hmm. in, in helping get the thing established here because none of us had ever run a, a basketball team. The two principals were still running their business in New York, so they were never out here. So he was the diners club, the diners saying. club folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was here, and then, and I was a local guy. So I and I was the one that he dealt with, right. though I was on the road a lot with my other projects. But um, um, he, um, uh, he 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 felt that that I was the one that he talked uh, that he talked to, and um, when things weren't going well. Um, you know, the guys in New York were saying, well, do something, change your team. Well, Eddie didn't want to change his team, you know, that much. But um, he, was a, he, was, he was a wonderful man. He knew more about the game and more about players than anybody ever knew. Tell me about the Bay Area at this time. You know, this is really a 49ers town. Of course, the Giants in 1962 are in the World Series against the Yankees. What was the Bay Area's receptiveness or maybe lack of receptiveness to your new basketball team oh sure it was lack of that's that's the exact word you know it was lack of receptiveness um we didn't have any players on the team that were from the way from our our neck of the woods but you had will chamberlain we had will chamberlain but will chamberlain uh, uh, all the papers wrote the same thing you know it it, it uh, it's the same thing if, if you like chocolate uh, you you get plenty of chocolate, but you don't get any of the other flavors, you know. And and and, and all we do, and, and and all the players are played on the team, you know. Mashiri was when right, nobody sure. shot the ball, you know. Every every ball went into him, and 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 he and he put it in the hoop. They'd have he'd have three guys on him. The next year, um, that was 1963-64, uh, we. Wilt had a good year, and we come up for air, and we win the Western Division champion. Right. We played Boston, lost in six games. We thought we arrived. Franklin's Warriors did arrive. In the playoffs, they defeated the St. Louis Hawks in seven games, then lost to the Boston Celtics in the NBA Championship Series. And now the game. Russell and Wilt again doing the jumping. Mascheri grabs it for the Warriors. Attles holds it up. 
With Wilt at 7-1, Thurman at 6-11, and Hightower at 6-9, San Francisco can be tough under the boards. Their big men make a real battle of it for that rebound. Thurman finally scores for the Warriors. For the season, six players averaged in double figures, led by league MVP Wilt Chamberlain. The 63-64 Western Division champions were brought together by the NBA Coach of the Year, Alex Hannum. But I can say this, that I wouldn't trade one minute of the time that I had with these great guys. I played for nine years, I coached for 16 years, and I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved the guys, and we had a great, great camaraderie. We came back from adversity. Alex Hannum had to be a very, very big part of that. He was a cohesive force. He's a, uh, besides being a very stern coach, uh, he was a very, he, he had a lot of, he had a great sense of humor. So between that, that kind of charisma he had, we knew we were going to go places. Next, trading the biggest star and the most dominating player in the NBA.